first. My name, my name is. My name or your name? Hi, my name is Natalie. I'm a musician, educator and researcher. I play the guzheng and I experiment with different sounds on my instrument. I also research into making shows for very young children. I play with an instrument that looks like a half-cut coconut. It's a piano sound but it sounds strange. Strange because I don't hear the sound every time. We wanted to introduce some of John Cage's philosophies and some of those ideas that inspired new music today. Uh, John Cage was very much about being, so being in the moment. So what we would have noticed in the workshop when it first started was that the children were just being in a playful moment. Perhaps unknowingly or not very consciously, but they were exploring and experimenting with the items and the sounds that they made. And so I, I let them just be first, and along the way I butt in to give them some idea of what they're doing. Like for example, oh, they can make loud sounds, soft sounds, and that's how they can be aware to sounds. Then right at the end, then I introduced to them that, oh, you know, John Cage was a composer and he created music just like the way you did. Commonly, there are specific ways that we will play on instruments, such as on the piano, naturally, you will look at the black and the white keys and you will play it like that in front of you. But for John Cage, he uh, innovated and did something called the pipette piano. During the session just now, I brought out a toy piano and typically, you know, it's a piano, children's instincts will be to play on the keys. But I did realise that with the objects given out that were made possible for them, they started to take those objects to interact with the piano. Every time we see an object like the piano, uh, we may think that conventionally you, you play it one way, but actually as an instrument of sound making, there are so many other possibilities. You can make sounds with different types of objects and they all can become instruments. He was also very interested in the concept of silence or whether silence existed or not. We can assume that with sound there is silence because when there's no sound there is silence, right? But for John Cage, uh, he was interested um, or rather he found out that silence does not really exist because even put in the quietest possible room, which was the anechoic cha chamber back then, he could still hear what he described to be his heartbeat as well as his nervous system. So music as we know it that comes in the form of songs and melodies with perfect harmonies are music for sure, but for John Cage it was really the sound that mattered. John Cage being in the moment was very important. It was always about the process, never really about the final product. And sometimes we are not even really looking for any outcome, per se. Sometimes we think that children being very young, they don't know anything, right? But in them, there's a lot of embodied knowledge. And I think if we do not give them enough varied experiences, they will never learn to process these experiences when they grow up.